Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. You are listening to a Venus Unplugged. This is your host, Lorraine Neidhart. And what we are doing here is um, exploring the myth of Inanna, who is an earlier version of Venus and Aphrodite. She is queen of heaven and earth, and her dark sister, Arishkagal. This myth, this poem, this epic cliffhanger of a myth, very important to the modern world, and very few people know this myth, because uh, we usually understand the, the Greek, but this is earlier, and when we left off uh, last week, Inanna was on her way, she had uh, met and uh, experienced her honeyman, her beloved, her groom which is where the sacred marriages of of earth and heaven come from. It's also where her honeyman, that's where the word honeymoon comes from. So right after the honeymoon, she listens to the below, the great below, and then realizes she needs to go to uh, meet her dark sister. So in in a sense, this archetypal... uh, force is, is bipolar. It goes back and forth. Okay, but but Arishka Gal, who's the dark sister who lives in the underworld, is the underworld. She is mourning the death of her husband. So we're having all these opposites. Uh, death and marriage and, and above and below. So when you start reading myth or alchemical text, or even trying to figure out a dream, you start noticing, wait, this is the opposite of this, this is above, this is below, and start creating kind of a spatial relationship, especially when you're doing dream work. You know, if you if you uh, put libido, which is your own kind of energy, your raw energy into understanding, everything becomes alive. It's just not some flat, unknowing bunch of words strung together. It is a great mystery. Or let's say we we have a nightmare. So what is a nightmare about? Nightmare is a message from uh, your psyche, uh, and it knows that the ego is in no way going to remember this or is not interested because the ego does think it is God, and of course it's not. So um, psyche gives us a nightmare to kind of trick the ego because we're going to remember a nightmare. We're going to remember that we were turbulent or something. And even though it, it it's terrifying, uh, any new energy that is coming into our life, especially if it's coming up from the depth of the unconscious, is pretty terrifying. Very few people do this inner work gracefully. And if you're doing it gracefully, you're not catching the message. So... That's why I particularly love this mythos. Okay, and also one of Inanna's or Ishtar's holy day is um, June twenty third, Midsummer. So she was celebrated at, uh, the, several times during the year. But that's a nice thing to remember if you're feeling a, a call uh, or uh, this uh, poem, this epic poem, uh, reaches you in some way. You know, the more we look at something, study, explore. Pinterest, whatever we want to do, the more alive this becomes. And that is one of the most important journeys at this time in evolution. We all have a myth we're unconsciously living out. It's a pattern. It's an archetypal pattern. And once we start understanding, like, oh, yes, now I understand it, we can then have a different mirroring for what's going on in our life rather than just, like, uh, avoiding. So when we left off, Inanna uh, was on her way into the underworld, and she went through the seven gates, and at each gate, something of her power of heaven and earth was removed, her scepter, her robe. And then the final thing is her white robe. So in a sense... She she dresses as a bride, but by the time she reaches through gate seven, uh, she's just a naked goddess, 
and her sister, <coughs> Arish Gagal, looks at her with the objectivity and the eyes of death and then hangs her on to meet her. So that's what, begins, that's what happens when we're in a depression. A part of us, okay, or, or the, because the, the energy and, and the lawfulness in Arish Gagal, every realm has its laws. <clears throat> and she tells Ainana, or Ainana is told, you know, the ways of the underworld are perfect. So like chill, you don't have any power here. Now, in our personal life, when we are willing in a contained, I'm not saying to go out in the middle of the street and do this, in a contained experience to surrender, not to another, but to our own dark, unknowing feminine, that's where the real feminine is. That's where she lives. That's, she's been separated. But these are impersonal forces. You know, basically, the unconscious doesn't give a shit. It's, it, it, it's going to live. It has to live according to its, its, um, its lines of force or its uh, mythos or, <coughs> or archetypal energy. So there are the eyes of death and there's the eyes of life, Right. But when one has earned the eyes of death, you either have just come out of a depression, a childbirth, a, um, a, the end of a relationship, a death, and there's a quality where, I guess in common parlance, we would call it, you know, the bullshit detector, right? Where we can look very objectively, and it's somewhat cold, so if somebody has been working your one last nerve or has been manipulating you and then suddenly you're, 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 you have found this strange because it's really odd the first time it happens. It's like, wow, did I like lose my heart or my feeling or my empathy? No, you're looking at it with the eyes of death. You see the motivation. It's like watching television with the t- sound down. You're just watching the actions. You can see. Because the the word can be beguiling. So that's part of, see, the eyes and the staring eyes, that's the potency of the soul, of what goes on. And as I said, the soul is not sweetness and light. It's a wild thing. So with these eyes of death, now, people who who have had the experience of uh, being envied, Okay, or of envying. That's that cold kind of stare that comes over people's eyes. It's like, and you look behind because you're hoping they're not looking at you. Right? <laughs> Gee, I wonder what they're looking at. Well, it can be that if it's on its negative side, right? But on its positive side, we learn to be extremely objective. And that's when the aha moment happens. It's like, wow, I never saw that before. They know that they're manipulating me or, you know, you're so bedazzled with somebody's um, confusion or chaos because a lot of times people will manipulate through chaotic behavior. And if you're a person who has a natural sense of order, you'll try to fix that. No, don't let, don't let them just do their dervish dancing. Let them do whatever. If there's a tendency to fix and help practice, well, you probably can only stand it for five minutes, so let's not be ridiculous. For five minutes, just say, you know, I'm just going to let them rot. I'm not going to pick them up because they need a tour of duty in the underworld. And then you'll see who they really are. When we disengage or we do something that is not normally expected, or sometimes, you know, if you're a person who just, you know, you're just a kind person and so yes is a is is natural to you. Just say no for the sake of saying no. Then you will find out what the other person really wants. Because they'll get furious. It's like but you've always said yes. It's like yeah but now I'm saying no. And but one needs to have that capacity of the eyes of death. 
And we need both. We need the eyes of life and we need the eyes of death. So when we can when we can do that and be objective, because what happens with the eyes of death, there is this sense of unrelatedness to the other. That is life or self affirmation. Uh, and uh, usually, uh, particularly women, want to be nice. Want to be rare? No, you don't have to be nice. Just test it. Be able to be both and not be attached to either one because it depends on the situation or, or, or the, the life journey. Or, you know, if you're, if you're needing to experience and you need to destroy the participation mystique, which is like why people get together, right? Something happens. Some great mystery happens. If we're stepping back, we we get a glimpse of what that uh, what, what's really going on. So in the in the poem, Inanna is unveiled and sees her own mysterious depth. And Arishka Gal, who glares back at her, has an immediate and 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 has a full experience of the underworld. And Inanna goes into the sacrifice willingly. That's also what happens in what the Jungians call the individuation process. There comes a point where you're just going down, and you need to do it consciously, and you need to be able to witness. And I'm not talking about masochistic suffering. It's It's being able to suffer the no-frills version of oneself, right? And we begin to really look at ourselves or experience ourselves or being able to give up because that's what the eyes of death are about. You know, it's, it's when we see past the pretense and past the ideals and and individuality and relatedness and all that good stuff is irrelevant. Then you are able to be in the presence of mystery. Because mystery is terrifying. It's dark. And you don't have a clue. Or a pin number. Or a cell phone. Nothing. You've got your eyes. And you've got your soul. So the the patterns that we see when we meet the uh, when we meet our own the dark feminine, which is where the real true feminine values are. That's where they're hidden, and that's why we need to go into these inner journeys or or shamanistic journeys or dream journeys, uh, because what begins to happen when we're in that state. And Arishka Gal is hanging out with us, the talk feminine. Um, all the uh, identification with the animus ideals. Now, the animus is the the male in, within the female psyche, and uh, the animus can be positive or negative. But it's it's the ideal of who we think we are, and you can wipe that smile right off your face when you're in the underworld because it's not going to happen. And it's also pre-verbal. When you're in the underworld, that's why you can't speak. Or that's why when you're in grief, there are no words. There literally are no words. You're in the pre-verbal state of the collective unconscious. So this is this is important work. This is an incredibly important myth for those who uh, learn along the mythic realm, and uh, and for those who who which is everybody you know has been at one point in some type of depression or or let's say uh, you uh, childbirth and then you go into a depression. It's like you haven't c- come up from from the uh, dark feminine because I'm not so much now but hey man uh, birth was always attended to by death in modern times we don't think about it much 
but it's still true of energetically and whether it's the birth of of a new sense of yourself or that old sense um you know we can go through identity crisis we can go through a um a midlife crisis and what does that mean it means the old tricks don't work the old perception of yourself and what life should and shouldn't be because by the time midlife comes i think you pretty much have a con idea that you know what my entitlement what I'm entitled to is to be a human being. That's about it. The rest gotta earn. So the important thing now for those who've been following along with Venus Unplugged, when I did the uh like sixteen chapters or something of uh the story of Eros and Psyche and Psyche's last task was to go into the underworld and get the beauty cream from Persephone. So Arishka Gal and Persephone are uh, similar in terms of the dark feminine, the knowing. And so the the what happened in that journey, Psyche didn't quite make it out. She wasn't supposed to look into the jar of the beauty cream, and she did. So she failed the initiation. All right, but the gods uh, were empathetic and allowed her to become. Uh, a goddess anyway so the wisdom of the dark feminine that psyche could not sustain right the knowledge she was to bring to Aphrodite which is the Greek Inanna to make her beautiful and eternal meaning conscious aware psyche saw it briefly and fell unconscious uh, for that age was not ready for such knowledge that age was not ready for such knowledge how huge these stories are. It's like they began before time. So it can be overwhelming because it's like, wow, there's so much going on here. It's like, so you read, you know, one line a day and you you look at this great epic poem and uh, and begin to realize where where does it apply in your life? So we need to have the knowledge uh, that the Arishka Gal, the dark feminine within us, is destruction and transformation into something completely new, and that is part of the cycle of life. And it is very hard to endure. I'm not even... Sometimes we get halfway and we just we, we we just can't, and that's cool too, because your psyche knows. Nope, we're going to give her a glimpse, but we're not going to take her totally in there. So, Arishka Gal is like the cold yin of and uh, and the, the suffering yin energy. So Inanna is hanging, impaled on this hook as she rots. And uh, what is that? It's called putrefaction. Is that that's when everything just turns to puke and ass, and it's like ugh, and life is ugh, right? But we gotta hang in there. We just hang on the meat hook. It's like okay. And it's done. It. You, you need to experience the whole thing, but there will be, as there always is, a new cycle coming in, another level coming in. See, and that is the the the, the genius of the feminine. It's a natural cycle. So even though sometimes reality can feel malevolent, it's not just means, oh, I get it. It's time to shift. It's time to let go. It's time to clean out the closets. It's time to go into the underworld and meet and have a teaching or initiation from the dark feminine. And then it's it gives great meaning. So the the part where Inanna 
who again is the queen of heaven and earth, and she is allowing herself. She knows, I have to do this. I have to do this for my people. I have to do this descent uh, for myself. I have to meet and draw from and be taught by and be initiated through the the uh, the dark sister, the unknown part of ourselves. See, and it's also the earth. It's a, in in the center of the earth lives this energy, the dark humus. That's where the word humility comes from. It doesn't mean we're Cinderella and Queen and Pots and filled with shame. It's humility. Humility does not have shame in it. It is a complete surrender of what we think we know or are or think that we should have or shouldn't have or get angry at the gods because we didn't get what we wanted or... Um, where we think we should be, humility says, no, I am in the dark earth. I'm a seed. You know, the Sufis use um, in their poetry, the, the seeds, the seeds of life. And it's a very beautiful image. So the seed in the soul is planted in the dark feminine, that mystery place. So in the descent, and in, with modern women, uh, they must go into that deep places where the extremes of beauty and ugliness are there, all the opposites kind of meet, and then where they're all dissolved together. And, you know, paradox is a very important skill to develop. Because when we are capable of paradox, we don't choose one over the other. We witness. It's like, whoa, look at that. Uh, I'm not getting in the middle of this fight or I'm not getting in the middle of this creative tension. I'll witness, I'll create, uh, but no, no, no. Or it's like, you know, you're two, between two friends. You're hearing both sides of the story and you really can see the paradox, how one is missing a piece that the other is projecting onto the other and it's really quite amazing that in everyday life, here it is. So this queen of beauty, Inanna, she becomes raw and just rotten. Life loses its energy, its beauty, its force. But it is a sacred process. And it represents the submission to Erishkigal and the destructive transformation mysteries that she symbolizes. So the unveiling, uh, that's the process where Inanna, who is a stellar goddess, submits herself to the concreteness and incarnation involved in her unveiling. So what does that mean? So this uh, motif in the story, that is the removal of old illusions and false identities that may have served in the upper world, but which count for nothing Zippo, uh, zero, in the netherworlds. You stand naked before the all-seeing eyes of the dark goddess. So the unveiling means you're being stripped bare. The unveiling of the goddess to herself. So that's what it's about. Maybe that's the real reason for burlesque. To be able to strip away and stand naked. So if that stripping away and standing naked before the dark goddess, it, you know, some really interesting things are going to happen. So it's that need to be exposed and undefended. Now, I'm not saying to do this in public. Don't take this literally. We can do it even in front of the mirror. Or we do it in a sacred and contained space. Or we do it in a place where the, the mysteries have uh, can be performed. 
Mm-hmm. And we're not going to just talk to any old fool about this because it just sounds too crazy ass. And you got to be a little crazy to want to be whole. Because the second you say, I want to be whole or I want to be spiritual, whatever it is that you want to be, you are calling forth some serious changes in your life. So Jung talks about uh, that often undressing symbolizes the extraction of the soul. And he quotes an alchemical text, disrobe me, that mine inner beauty may be revealed. The inner beauty is the soul, child of the sun and moon. But adds Jung, undressing signifies putrefaction as well as in the alchemy uh, in the negredo is also represented as the garment of darkness. So in the alchemical work, one is, it, your individuation is not going to start in the light. It's going to start in the darkness. It's going to start when you trip over your shadow or you realize, wait, man, I keep on on doing this and it keeps on coming back to me, so I better get a hold of my shadow here and find out what's going on. So this extraction of the soul symbolizes the the undressing. And for like Inanna, the clothing is the flesh of incarnation. And death is the taking off of the mortal vestments. Undressing for human beings already incarnate in body egos is uh, is a disincarnation mode. Uh, the end of one's form of the body ego, you know, who I am. Who you are and who the body is and all that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Because the self is hidden there in the body, which is why we honor the body, we take care of the body. We don't abuse it. And we let it live its natural instinctual life, hopefully. So, you know, the unveiling can also relate to what uh, going naked before the goddess or before our higher self. But we have to go naked because we are before the all-seeing eye of the self, the capital S. We can feel so exposed. That's what happens. See, when there's been a lot of shame in your life or you feel shame, but you were not allowed to be naked. Someone would have pointed out or embarrassed, or there was something you were doing, or children go through a natural stage of, of exhibitionist, and they just have to dance around naked. They're so darling. And, uh, you know, oh, oh, don't do that. How could you do that? And that goes into the body. And so then it can become difficult for us to go like, yeah, yeah, I love my shadow, love my light. So before mm-hmm. the great mother, we're revealing all. And we find her objective acceptance of all of us, shadow and light. You know, that's what the the dark goddesses are about. Complete and utter acceptance. No judgment. So this unveiling is, is very hard to do if you're a father's daughter. Because it means giving up defensiveness and the illusions of identity. All the stuff of the upper world. So we will continue uh, with the, this myth of Inanna and with this journey into the feminine mysteries and into our inner world and its return. Bye bye. I'm going to put this on Facebook. You can go on my website, LorraineNightheart.com, L L O R R A I N E, Nightheart, N E I T H A R D T. Bye bye. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. You are a mighty fortress of supreme knowledge. Progressive Direct has not only revealed their rates, but those of their competitors. If you were any more in the know, you would be drowning in, you know, the know. 
Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates because knowledge is power. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. 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 buy. 